Yeah, good morning. Let's resume our discussion. What is that we were discussing in the last class? Can any of you give a couple of points on what we were discussing in the last class? What is that we were discussing in the last class? Um, we were discussing about type of visual words and various steps in the technique, uh, starting from uh, formation of the, uh, starting from capturing of all the key points, all the visual words, then using clustering to uh, reduce those visual words into code words, then moving on to classification of those code words into three classes. Then we take the test sample and extract the visual words from that. And at last we perform supervised classification to find the class of our test image. Very good. So we have seen all the steps of the bag of visual words. Uh, and uh, we said this is a much more powerful uh, uh, feature extraction procedure because it takes the features, shift features at different locations in the object and put, to, put them together uh, to identify which are the frequently occurring features of that class and uh, in assessing the class level. Uh, further, it, it uh, also gives a uh, holistic understanding about the uh, object of interest. But it misses one of the important aspect. What is that? Kathy, your voice is breaking. Can you repeat? It's a geometrical orientation. Right. Uh, it doesn't bring the, have the geometrical, uh, complete uh, spatial, uh, correlate, spatial information of the object. Uh, that means, uh, say, it just collects the information about hands, head, mm, eyes, and so on, if it is person, and the features of them are collected, but it doesn't have geometrically where they are located with respect to each other and so on. Mm, fine, that's okay. That uh, doesn't, uh, there are, there is a class of algorithms which are called parts-based model. They uh, doesn't really care about which part it is, but they uh, try to bring together uh, different parts information and then try to make the inference. And this can be considered somewhat uh, closer to that. And it's more of feature-based method where we get the features uh, to describe the object. Uh, and uh, the holistic information of the object is uh, put to, putting together those features uh, however, the spatial uh, um, aspects are not very much considered in this. And of course, the current deep learning methods does have the spatial information also in them. So they are in some sense more powerful or much more powerful than extracting features like this and performing classification. There are in computer vision also, there are several methods which also takes the spatial information together with the uh, feature information for performing a task, either let it be a uh, detection task or tracking task or even another kind of uh, computer vision task. So in this uh, class, let us discuss about the image segmentation in more detail. While discussing image segmentation, two uh, methods that we will see uh, for image segmentation are two or three methods. First, we will see uh, um, uh, about histogram based image segmentation. If we are just known about the intensity distribution of the images, how do we perform the image segmentation? Second, we will see uh, if we are given a clustering based approach, how do we perform? Uh, or if we would like to perform um, image segmentation through clustering based approach, how do we perform image segmentation? Third, we will introduce a technique called mean shift. And then we will also see how the mean shift algorithm or mean shift helps us to find out the, uh, to perform the image segmentation. And so, um, uh, to start with, uh, what is image segmentation? And what do you think is image segmentation? I'm just breaking up image into smaller parts. To split the image into different parts. Okay, so for example, if uh, say just a uh, easy to understand satellite uh, image. Okay, and here there is a um, road. Okay, and here it is water. And here it is road. Sir, is thresholding comes under th segmentation? What is that? Is thresholding uh, taking? Yeah, thresholding also comes under image segmentation, right? 
So thresholding we apply on histogram essentially to perform image segmentation. That's what is the first kind of approach that we uh, discuss. And so I assume that these are buildings. Okay, so this is one scenario. So or we may have actually, so here, no, this is a uh, microscopic uh, slide image, wherein there are some red blood cells. Okay, and there are some white blood cells. Okay, so how do we perform different, uh, say, how do we separate uh, the white blood cells and red blood cells from the background? And there can be uh, other several other examples, natural images. So in natural images, what may be of interest? So there may be some person here. Okay, and there may be some uh, car. Okay, so there may be some again um, building somewhere. Okay, etc. So there are different objects. Hmm. And trees. Okay, so there are different objects. So now, how do we uh, mm, separate them? Also, uh, typically, this image segmentation or uh, trace there there can be different kind of image segmentation. So one way is one one is referred to as semantic segmentation. Semantic segmentation means we would like to see, see uh, um, uh, semantically separate. That means qualitatively separate the content of the image. Okay, uh, we don't want to distinguish if there are two persons. Okay, we don't want to distinguish between the persons. We just say that actually uh, there are just persons. Okay, that is semantic segmentation. But if it is instant segmentation. Each instant is different. That means this RBC first is different from this RBC. So one, two, three, four, we would like to give different, different color or different, different distinguishing between these RBCs among RBCs or among persons as well. That is instant segmentation. Uh, putting these together, even there, there are other segmentation like panoptic segmentation. where we will have both semantic segmentation and as well as the instant segmentation. So now coming to the first uh, task, instant segmentation, semantic segmentation, in satellite images, okay, essentially what kind of segmentation do you think we will perform? On satellite images? Semantic. Semantic, semantic segmentation because the building, for one building, we really don't want to distinguish from second building and so on. Similarly, road is road water is water and so on. We don't want to distinguish different, uh, say, lakes and so on. So it, unless we are very focused on particular study. So uh, now if you want to perform segmentation, what do you think are the procedures to perform segmentation within your understanding? As I mentioned, I have given a clue in terms of uh, saying that we will go with histogram-based approach. And then clustering based approach. And then uh, probability density function based approach. That is mean shift here. Okay. So given this first one, histogram based approach, what do you think? How I say you can take the simple case of this uh, RBC to WBC classification or RBC to WBC segmentation from the background. So how do you think we will perform based on histogram based approach? Any idea on that? 
So you can consider this as task one, this task two, and then task three. In task two, for example, say if I would like to go by histogram based approach for segmentation, what do you suggest? From the histogram, we can find the threshold value. Uh, and First of all, how, the do you think from the, how do you think the histogram looks like? Mm, it will look like different peaks. Will come. Okay. I mean, different you want to take R RGB based histogram or a grayscale histogram? That is the first question. When we want to go for histogram based approach, we have to see whether the images are uh, represented in grayscale. Grayscale means what? All the intensity values here will be in the range 0 to 255. Okay, if it is the RGB, we have three channels. Okay, each channel representing 0 to 255. Where, say, if you consider RGB image, just to make the things very easier. Okay, so you will have now histogram if I want to see. What will happen? I can have actually three histograms for each image, or I can have actually 0 to 255. This is our region. And then again, 0 to 255, uh, this is B region. And then again, uh, 0 to 255 for uh, G region and B region. In that case, what will happen? If it is a red blood cell, so if I, so how do I approach? Give me some idea. Uh, anyway, I can anyway uh, give the details. But if I want to segment here, red blood cells versus white blood cells, how do you think I can do that? Hmm? I can go for a histogram based approach as we mentioned, but uh, how do I use the histogram? So even to give a simpler example, take the task four, where in task four is uh, say uh, some text written on uh, um, white background. Okay, we want to separate the text from the background. From a photo that we have taken uh, of this uh, image. See, this image will have actually all intensities ranging from 0 to 255. We want to just perform test segmentation. Okay, how do you think I will perform in this case? First, let us start with this in this case. I have a histogram 0 to 255, okay? And uh, mm, mm, how do you think the histogram will be? And how can I apply, apply histogram-based threshold or histogram-based segmentation? That is the question. In the histogram, maximum pixel intensities are uh, uh, at the zero intensity level. Okay. And Zero and two fifty five. Mm -hmm. So take the threshold. It will be higher. Zero will be higher or uh, white. Two fifty five will be higher. Two fifty five is the higher. Yeah. So considering background uh, having uh, many pixels, this is high. And then around this also there will be some intensities in the sense that they may not be completely zero because when I convert this text into uh, um, grayscale, when I take a picture of a uh, book, for example, okay, where there is something written, okay, there can be uh, these intensities need not be necessarily all completely 255, okay, somewhat close to 255, and these not necessarily all be zero, exactly zero, somewhat uh, mm, like they can be uh, mm, in between zero and something, okay, zero to five, for example, is it not? Because uh, they, they are not binary, strictly binary. Right? So in that case, now what is the next step? So assume that there are some intensities here, okay? Uh, some intensities here. Then what is the next step? I have got the histogram like this. I want to now perform thresholding. Or I, I want to now perform segmentation. 
how should I approach? Aryan, how should I approach? Sir, I don't have any idea. You don't have idea? No, sir, I'm thinking. Okay. So you understood, uh, we, we have just made a histogram of the uh, um, image where there is a black text written on white background. Then the intensity distribution will be around towards 255 or the higher values or bright values, there will be higher, more number of pixels. Oh, so what is this? the frequency or the number of pixels? Of pixels, okay, taking a particular intensity value. It will be very high towards the 255. It will also be high towards zero because the text region will be on, is on black, is with black. Now, using this information, what we want to do, we want to separate the text only. We want to only highlight the text. What should we do? See, highlighting text means what? If I take a grayscale image, it, it is not fully binary in the sense that some of the text still be looked at, say, instead of zero, it may be at 10 intensity level. Some of the white background may be even ranging from uh, 200, 150, like that. Because based on how I take the picture, there can be the different kind of gray levels that can be formed in the background. Now I want to binarize it. Segmentation means what? Completely separate the foreground and background. Now to perform that, on the top of this histogram, what is the operation that I can do? Sir, thresholding. Yeah, thresholding. Where should I tre threshold? Sir, uh, it's like trial and error method. What adjusting is that? the threshold value. Adjust by adjusting the threshold value and observing the output, uh, we can get the best threshold values. Yeah, that's Take okay. the threshold value as a middle of two peaks. Okay, so I will see wherever is the assume that there is a usually assume that this is a uh, gradually decreasing intensity. So, okay, these are also gradually decreasing intensities. I will see that actually, so roughly where the uh, valley is there between these two Gaussians, if I consider half Gaussian also, wherever there is a valley dip between these two peaks, okay, I'm considering that as the threshold. And after thresholding, what do you think is my next operation? I have found a threshold now. Okay. Below the threshold value, assign the all the pixel values to zero, and above the threshold value, assign all pixel values to two fifty five. Right. So uh, all these pixel values below this, okay, will be assigned to zero. Okay. All these pixel values around this to two fifty five only. Okay. Then what? As a result, what will happen? This histogram now, if I see, it will be completely black and white, indicating that the background, which is zero, is separated from the foreground, which is 255. Okay? Because what will happen when I take a picture, some of these, say, some of these, uh, mm, uh, to write, okay, uh, mm, maybe in light color. Is it not? You can see like this. Still, they can be now, after if you properly threshold, then what we can see is these also can be observed as uh, foreground. So 255 corresponds to the background or the text? Yeah, 255 corresponds to the text. That's what we are assuming now. Okay, this corresponds to the text. Okay, this corresponds to, sorry, sorry. It corresponds to the background, right? Okay. Yeah, 255 corresponds to the background. Oh, but however, even if I write light foreground means even this may be, a, um, say, around, uh, uh, if this threshold is 100, okay, this may be around 80 uh, or whatever. Okay, slightly, hmm, uh, it's not purely zero. In so, sir, if we make the text side below the threshold, uh, we can see the text side histogram uh, frequencies there. So, if we make that as zero, so won't our text disappear? If I make the uh, threshold towards this side, this uh, zero, the background, correct. So that will only give us white background. Ah, it will only give white background, correct. And so what I say, if I proper do not properly decide on the background, what can happen? This uh, mm, say 
here in this case, uh, we can have two scenarios. One scenario is we can have actually uh, only this black, whatever is there, text on background, white background. Okay, this can only be uh, there in the uh, foreground. Okay, uh, or the other scenario is we can have actually this uh, text on white background. And light, light foreground. Light, okay. Mm, foreground means, uh, yeah, foreground is black for us. Okay, both will be black. In the sense that here, at assume that uh, threshold is equal to, say, if I put threshold is being 150, uh, sorry, threshold here is 150, and here it is 50, assume that. Okay, threshold 50 means anything above 50, I am making it as white. Okay, so it's pushed to the uh, it is pushed to the background. Here it is pushed to the foreground. Is this clear? Tab menu is this fine? Yes, sir. Yes. So based on how we put the threshold, things will vary. Of course, we will see some real scenarios. Single threshold for the whole image also may not be good all the time because what will happen? If I take the average intensity uh, itself in the different regions in the image are different, okay, then what will happen? I cannot put a single threshold for the whole image. Okay, so that is the limitation of the histogram based approach. Even here, when we want to segment the uh, red blood cells and white blood cells, how do we do it? We have to perform actually different, different uh, thresholdings at different, different regions. Or even if you would like to take based on R, G, and B, we have to take R channel, okay, and then put a threshold. Above a threshold, I will say that, how do we separate red blood cells and white blood cells here? Assume that now I have the histogram here of red region, okay, blue, green, and blue. Okay, each is zero to 255. How do you think I will perform now segmentation in this case? Hmm? Any idea? I just want to separate now RBCs only first. And then I want to separate only WBCs. Next, I assume that I want to perform, get two images, one RBCs, one WBCs. How do you think I will perform? Given this discussion, hope you should be able to tell. So in RBC image, red blood cells will appear where? The, wherever the red blood cells are there, their intensity corresponds to what? Red channel. Yeah, red channel and high values in red channel. Okay? And if there are white, white blood cells, their intensities appear where? In this histogram. Sir, all over, all over the RBC, sir. No, usually white blood cells are not in white. They are added with stain, so they will be in blue. These are the white blood cells. Oh, so their uh, intensity is not white. Okay, so they will be shown with stain in uh, in color. They will be blue. So now, where they will where, where will they appear in blue channel towards the high values of the blue blue intensities. So now if I want to separate, so others will all be small, small values. Okay, randomly some values. So now if I want to separate only RBCs, what do I perform? I design a rule threshold such that R value is greater than something, I say it is a red blood cell. If we would like to separate only white blood cells, then what we say? If the blue value is lesser than something, then we say that it is a white blood cell, like that. Uh, so, hope you understand how we can perform the uh, segmentation using the histogram based approach. But as we have seen, it, it has several limitations because all the time we cannot separate. Say, if I ask road building and uh, water and so on, see the, some of the colors of the roads and buildings can be the same or even say white building can be there and different colors of buildings can be there. 
and then uh, water and road also sometimes can have you know, roughly somewhat similar color uh, so uh, distinguishing them is not very easy all the time with colors even in natural images it's much more difficult several cars will have different colors okay and then uh, trees at least visitation we can do up to something okay and then uh, again persons uh, can wear any uh, dresses and so on so we have a large number of uh, um, colors that uh, and mix with mix of the colors between the classes so just color based segmentation or histogram based segmentation alone is not very effective in terms of performing segmentation now how do you think we can apply clustering for segmentation that is the next task what is your idea we have studied about clustering right we have seen what is k means clustering and so on how do you think clustering can be used for segmentation just take the example of uh, again red blood cells and white blood cells because that is simple to discuss hey you think meanwhile you should be able to tell the answer for me sir we cluster the pixels having same intensity value right so first what we need to have is we need to have a feature vector if we want to perform clustering so how would you like to have a feature vector is the question if you would like to start perform clustering so similar intensity values we would like to cluster into same group that's what is the suggestion so if you would like to go with that so we have to first capture the intensity values one is say intensity value if we consider x, i of x comma y is intensity value it given x and y is it not so if i just cluster based on the intensity values then what will happen all similar pixels having the same intensity will come into the one class uh, other in pixels having other intensities will be other class but if we want to cluster here uh, red blood cells and blue um, white blood cells which are in blue what do you suggest clustering with gray scale image on the top of gray scale image features or on the color image features hmm which features are more effective or better to separate or segment the white blood cells and red blood cells sir rgb sir yeah and so we can take now in such okay intensity values in r b and g as a three dimensional vector feature vector and so this is a three cross one feature vector for at any given pixel x comma y now how, what do i perform i may perform clustering to separate or to identify the red blood cells and white blood cells how many clusters do you think i should have now to separate uh, to perform this segmentation two clusters okay is it two clusters hmm two clusters is it enough Three, sir. Yeah, why three? Two for uh, white blood cells and one for. Hmm. One for uh, red blood cells, one for the background. And so we have to have the three clusters. So we decide that k equal to three, and then we have anyway three dimensional vector. We how many features? Uh, how many samples are there for us? Or for to perform segmentation? If it is hundred cross hundred images, okay. How many samples are there? how many samples to be segmented are these three classes hmm how many samples are there here 10000 10000 okay 10000 samples because each pixel intensity will give three dimensional vector okay and at each pixel i want to put whether it is belongs to the background class is it a background class okay or white blood cell class or red blood cell class that is the question i have to ask at each pixel okay is this pixel a background white blood cell or red cell same question will arise at each location 
so thousand samples we have now uh, say since you know k means clustering you can perform k means clustering once i perform clustering what do you think will happen assume that i have performed k means clustering okay what do you think will happen Yeah, what do you think will happen ideally? Uh, we will get clusters of all uh, same intensities or near intensities of one in yeah. one cluster. So what essentially may happen in these three dimensions, if you see, okay, what uh, say our RBC pixels may be somewhat uh, closer, okay, in terms of say high values of R here, okay, probably uh, green also if it is high, it's okay. So then uh, I think, uh, mm, and then white blood cells will have high values. So they may not be exactly same values. Okay, high values of blue and then some green. Okay, and then what will happen? Uh, the background may be somewhere here. These are all the background samples. So what we can see, this whole thing will become the cluster one. And this is another cluster and this is other cluster. This is, these all samples of this cluster corresponds to RBC pixels. Okay, and then similarly, uh, uh, WBC pixels. Okay, similarly, for WBC and background. Right? And hence we can say that then we say that these are all RBC pixels. Some of them may be missed. So RBC may be missed to background. So what is the disadvantage of this kind of method? Any uh, thought on this? What do you think is the disadvantage of this kind of method? See, when I perform all RBC pixels to this, so these are all become RBC. If there is a small Okay, uh, different color, in between it may be uh, classified to WBC. Okay, all surrounding are RBC, but uh, one of them may, be, uh, may go to the WBC. One of them may go to the background. Okay, so this may go to the background. Remaining all are RBCs. So there is a no exact spatial coherence or in terms of the complete, uh, you are not getting a complete... Um, uh, object are the complete region of the RBC detected as RBC. Okay, it can happen. So if there are several other methods to counter that. For example, they apply non-maxima suppression or say if they, uh, they go with a small median filter kind of thing, wherein they see a, in a three cross three region, okay, if all pixels are RBCs, okay, and some pixel is the say middle pixel is WBC, Okay, then what do they do? They can convert that also into WRBC. Okay, like that. So they just see the pixels in that window and then assign the same label as that of the majority of the pixels to the center value of the pixel. Okay, that they can do. Also like that. So if you have three classes, among the three classes, what are the number of pixels in class one, class two, class three? And the center pixel can be assigned to the label of the highest class. So some such uh, operations can be used as post-processing. But however, this is also a potential method of performing uh, segmentation. Mm, so mm, there is, in fact, this stems from a mathematically very rigorous method called expectation maximization. Mm, K-means has originated from this. I will not discuss on this. Uh, probably in statistical processing kind of courses, this will be discussed. So now what I will do is I will discuss some of the slides to visualize these things. And then based on the time, we will go for, uh, hmm, we will go for the, uh, uh, bag of visual mean shift algorithm, hmm, a discussion on mean shift. So, so far any questions before I start the discussion with the slides? 
Yeah, these are slides taken from some of the uh, um, internet resources. Uh, they, these are reasonably very good for uh, segmentation. So I'm going ahead with this. So as you can see here, uh, image segmentation, especially semantic segmentation deals with segmenting different parts of the image uh, into different uh, objects. So he, here, this is all tree region. Okay, as you can see here, this is all tree region. Yeah, this is, uh, these are all the, this is car, this is roads and so on. And this is another example of segmentation where segmentation is needed. So in autonomous driving, uh, we would like to see uh, the whole road um, to be segmented into different parts so that the comfortably we can drive on the correct path. So it's, as you can see, this is the main road Okay, and then the uh, barriers or guardrails uh, and so on. We started with histogram based splitting or segmentation. So as you can see here, if you would like to segment different parts of the object here, we can see the uh, histogram. One, in the histogram, usually there are different procedures for thresholding in histogram. One of the very well-known uh, procedure in thresholding a histogram is referred to artso based thresholding where what they do is they form mm, the histogram as a mixer of Gaussians in the sense that, as you can see here, the first um, intensity region can form a one Gaussian. Okay, bright intensity region form another Gaussian, Gaussian and in between this uh, intensity regions forms another Gaussian. So we can see that actually if we have three Gaussians, we can see the values of these three Gaussians to make the thresholds. Well, that's how usually is done. Those who know more about Bayesian classification, uh, this also comes under uh, putting a decision boundary between two classes of the uh, mm, in an unsupervised fashion. Uh, if we consider, if you know the class labels, it is putting decision boundary between two classes, both represented by their likelihood being Gaussian. Okay, likelihoods. Uh, if we don't know the class labels, as is the case here, we model this by a Gaussian mixer in the sense that mixer of two, three, distributions and what we are putting is the addition boundary on the Gaussian mixes. Okay, and then this will result in kind of uh, segmentation like this. So in fact, this is widely used in uh, image processing, um, putting a threshold uh, appropriately on the histogram with Gaussian mixer models. And this is also used in canny edge detector and, uh, and uh, few other uh, places uh, to separate the edges from the background and so on. So in some of the cases, what may happen is if you see the first stretch of the histogram, it may not be able to separate all the regions in the image, uh, all the objects in the image. So what we can do is if we see this image, the majority of the regions, if you see there may be only two regions. First, we split, we can split those two regions. Then in that two regions, what we can do is separately, we can again up, find out the histogram. For the lower region alone, we can find a histogram. For the upper region alone, we can find another histogram. And then we can uh, sequentially split. That means within the lower region, again, are there two regions of different intensities Okay, that we can see. So this can go in a coarse to fine manner. First, having a coarser histogram, putting a threshold on that to separate the background are two different majority of the majorly separating color regions. Okay, and then taking each region uh, and finding the local histogram rather than the global histogram. Only part, for that part, we can find the histogram and then separate the uh, regions in that um, part, sub-regions in that part. Okay, and then there can be different uh, kind of uh, images wherein the histograms can be quite uh, varying. Okay, and then uh, histogram based thresholding always is not very optimal or very uh, easy uh, to perform segmentation. Also, there can be some scenarios, they have shown some failing scenarios where it is not easy to, at all uh, to see um, how to separate the different regions in image by histogram thresholding. So these are all the different examples where we can miss. So in such cases, one possible solution is to go for local histogram and thresholding on local histogram rather than to going on the 
global histogram. And so uh, you can see the slides. They have given in detail the discussion. Uh, here, as you can see here, the intensity, uh, background intensity itself changes. And hence, if you go with a single histogram, this is what results. The text, half of the test is lost in the background. So what we can do? We can go for a local thresholding, okay, wherein you take each local patch. Okay, so first take actually 10 plus 10 patch, next 10 plus 10 and so on. If you have 100 plus 100 image and find out the histogram there and only put the thresholding on that histogram, local threshold. Okay, so this is what you can see here that improves the results. So local thresholding is what is seen in the second image here. Okay, the second row. Uh, second row, as you can see, for each patch, they have made a histogram. And on that histogram, they perform a threshold. As you can see, it gives a better eyes, okay, um, et cetera. So it gives a better thresholding overall. So when we usually uh, grayscale to binarizing, the images also forms a good task because binary image has very um, less than two bits to represent, whereas grayscale image has eight bits to represent. So if we have a, enough information, uh, in, even in binary image, that's more welcome than to have a grayscale image. Of course, the thresholding can also be done on different color uh, channels, R, G, and D, like we have discussed in the on the uh, red blood cell and white blood cell segmentation. That also helps to uh, highlight the details better. In some cases, people want to split first and then merge. Okay, so that also can be done. So now the discussion is on the um, uh, K-means clustering. So we have seen the details of the K-means clustering in the previous uh, uh, previous uh, classes. We will see some of the slides now just to highlight the uh, K-means clustering, how it is performed and so on. Uh, I will just share the slides in on the other computer to visualize them better. You're able to see, I think, right? Slides here. Are you able to see the slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Right. Also, you can see now uh, this is what we have discussed so far. And then let's see some of the slides on K-means clustering. Here it nicely visualizes how K-means clustering happens in each iteration. Also, with some of the visual examples. That will help us to understand k-means clustering also better. See, at the beginning, what will happen? Randomly, we select three uh, samples or the three locations as three in the feature space as the three means. Okay, and then what we do in k-means clustering? First, take some arbitrary means. Then what we do? We find out the um, we assign all the samples to those means. Okay, and then after assigning all the samples to those particular means. What we perform is to identify new mean for that cluster we have formed. And then uh, take again with the respect to the new mean SN clusters. And then again, take new mean, okay, and so on. As a clustering followed by finding out mean for that cluster. Again, clustering followed by um, class finding new mean and so on. This repeats. That's what you can see here. When we start here, these two are three means. Okay, now, um, uh, three means are initialized and then clustering is formed. This is the first cluster. Okay, then they are updating the means now. As you can see here, updating a couple of times, the means doesn't change. And that is the convergence of clay means clustering. And this is also visualized in slightly different manner here. Okay, as you can see, the means are uh, now assigned with these uh, marks. Okay, and you can see that uh, the means are keep updating. And the, mm, correspondingly, the samples assigned to that cluster are also updated. So as you can see, the iteration number also here. So hope you understand the k-means clustering now. Better. Mathematically, yes. what we are doing. So these are the initialized means. Okay, we can arbitrarily initialize. We can also initialize with respect to some of the samples in the sample set itself. Three means can be three different samples. Okay, how do we initialize means to get a better clusters is also a good research area. Also, for example, some of the people will initialize the means. So if I initialize means somewhere here, okay, second mean will be as farthest as possible with respect to this mean. Third mean will be as farthest as possible with respect to the first two means. Okay, that's a good 
strategy to initialize the means. Based on how we initialize the means, the iterations also will differ. Not only the iterations, convergence also slightly differ. Okay. So initializing means also plays a good role. And what method we, what mathematical uh, um, equations we use for assigning a particular sample to a cluster also matters. Here, what we are using is Euclidean distance to assign a particular sample to a cluster. If it is closer to the mean, a particular mean of a particular cluster, then we are assigning that sample to that cluster. Okay. So essentially, we are finding the distance with respect to the mean uh, for each of the samples. Whichever samples are closest to that mean rather than other means, we are assigning to that cluster. We can also find out different ways of distance rather than uh, pure distance like this. We can also find correlation with respect to the mean. Okay, because these are vectors, but there are different ways of finding, assigning the clusters. After assigning the clusters, finding new mean, okay, we can perform by just finding the averaging. Uh, if we know the probability density function or probability PDF of the samples, we can also use the expectation, okay, to find out the mean value. Okay, so that's where it is related to expectation here and maximizing um, in terms of assigning the clusters to the uh, particular mean value, maximizing or um, maximizing the closeness, proximity of the means to the samples. Okay, and then we see that we repeat it till we get the, um, the difference between the mean values of each of the clusters is very small. I oh, hope you understand this. So if you have any questions on k-means clustering, you can ask. Okay. And this k-means clustering can be applied for segmentation as we discussed before. How do I apply if this is the original image? If I take k equal to 2, what will happen? It separates the dominant class, dominantly separating um, regions. This region is quite different from the background, so it only separates these two. If I put k equal to 3, I am making three clusters. So the means also will be keep in it. I am assuming that the intensity values, RGB values are used as the uh, mean like features. With that, we initialize some means and then start k-means clustering. We can perform this. Even while performing k-means clustering, other thing that people use is in addition to the RGB values, they also use the spatial coordinates. The reason being most of the clusters will, ha will have the uh, spatially closer um, regions as well. In the sense that, say, one pixel here arbitrarily doesn't go to another cluster. Okay, given that they can also use x, y, r, g, b, five dimensional vector, feature vector for performing k means clustering to uh, separate out the different regions in an image. Okay, that you can see here. Okay, here if we put k equal to four, this is what you can get. So if I use more number of clusters, k equal to five or 10, what do you think will happen? If I use k equal to 10? Uh, it will cluster more, more images. Yeah, even more, it will segment more nicely. Right, and more segments will come. Even small variations will go into the other cluster uh, or a new cluster. In that case, which is better? k equal to 10 is better or k equal to 2 is better or k equal to 4? What, what is the better k? Hmm? I think depend on the application, yeah, you can choose the k value. Like if we want to apply on natural images, so we will go for higher k values. Right. Oh, based on the domain knowledge, usually we can fix this. So if we know a priori how many segments we wish to get, we can put that k. Uh, if we have a rough idea, based on that, we can put. Putting too much high k value doesn't mean that a better classroom. Okay, as you can see here, here also it is performed through k-means clustering. You can see different regions in the object, like image. As we discussed with different initialization, the cluster changes. Okay, and then with the number of k values also cluster changes. Oh, you can see very clearly here. If we take very large high, high k value, how, how is it? Okay, we can separate even small regions here as you can see. Okay, even this, this was the, I think, uh, it's because, because of how we are visualizing. Only in this image, when we capture the intensities. Okay, so we'll stop the discussion here. If you have any quick question, you can ask. Probably in the next class, then we'll discuss mean shift, uh, base segmentation, and then uh, we'll move on to the stereo. Or otherwise, I will skip the mean shift for time being and discuss directly the stereo for in the next class.
Yeah, any questions? Thank you then.